Oh shit, here we go. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> I'm going to take the cop side though. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I'm okay with this cop shooting him. Um, pretty interesting little case. It's funny the questions that were answered and we had we find more information. Let's take a look at what kind of what happens here. Go! Stop reaching! Stop reaching! Stop reaching! Shoots the guy. I think three times. Might have been four. Um, okay, just from this video, who thinks this is justified? Hopefully you said we don't know what happened. We don't know because you don't know. So let's take a look at what happened. Everybody called this police department because this freaking woman that they got reading this bullshit is just like, what? You got, I mean, it's just freaking crazy. All right, let's, let me see if I can get to it and try to get around her. What's your name? Sorry, it was Sean. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Ladd, and I serve as the public information officer with the Casper Police Department. Oh, my God. I'm the public administration officer. Oh, wow. Well, are you a cop or are you not a cop? And if you are a cop, why aren't you working the road? Oh, it was too scary, so they made you the PR person? Gee, I wonder how that happened. Why is it that every PR person in every police department happens to be a woman? Rick, it's diversity in you. Oh, shut up. Reading this like everybody's an idiot and like she's so smart, I, I just... It just drives me nuts. Anyway, the chief evidently, this was too menial of a job for the chief to do it. The chief comes on after she reads everything. So uh, here's the incident real quick. I'll bump it up. My name is Rebecca Ladd, and I serve as the public officer involved. I'll read a portion of a letter from Natrona County District Attorney Daniel Itson. On May 6th, 2021, two Casper police officers were on patrol at 3.50 a.m. The two officers also noticed the two occupants of the vehicle acting suspiciously upon noticing the patrol car. The two officers were... Okay, so they said acting suspiciously. They should have, hopefully, the officers in their report articulated that better. Acting suspicious can be looking, talking, moving, reaching in the back seat, appear to be hiding things, reaching under the seat, making furtive movements, uh, appear to be driving in a circular motion like they didn't know where they were going or lost. All those things is what they mean when they go acting suspicious. Sharing a patrol car. The driver, Officer Linkowski, was in the final week of his trip. So the driver is on FTO, and the, the passenger, the officer that ended up shooting, is his FTO. Because he was in his final week, a lot of agencies put what's called a shadow program. When you're on field training, FTO, their last week, your FTO will dress as civilian clothes. He will act as a civilian. He doesn't give you any advice, and he only intervenes on officer safety issues. He's still a cop. He's still armed, but he doesn't wear a uniform, so other people don't come up to him and ask him questions or try to intercede with him. So they, he just it's called a shadow program, kind of like the last week, and you shadow your trainee before you pass him to see how he does on his own. And that's kind of what this cop was doing, except the FTO noticed that this situation was going to shit, which I agree. Training. The passenger, Officer Bigelow, was acting as a vehicle in the area of Elma and H. Stretch the vehicle. Okay, so here's your FTO in plain clothes with his belt on, and the uniform officer makes a stop. Officer Linkowski asks for identification from both occupants. When I'm, when I'm watching this, I'm wondering, why is the FTO getting to your vehicle before you? I, I don't understand that. If I was this guy's FTO, it'd be like, dude, I shouldn't be getting to the vehicle before you. You turned on your lights. You stopped a dude. Get the hell out of the car and make contact before you let these guys set up, draw guns, get guns, etc. Get to the damn vehicle. It's at night. So I'm not sure why the FTO got to this vehicle before the, the trainee. I would have a problem with that if I was his FTO. Depends of the suspect vehicle, and neither are able to produce it. The driver. At least he's putting his hand on his gun. Good officer safety. It's at night. They were already acting suspicious. He's already up here. He's approaching with his hand on his gun. Good for him. He identifies himself accurately. So this guy is the passenger who ends up getting shot and killed. The passenger, it is later learned, provides officers with a false name. Did you catch that? They slid that in for you people not paying attention. I'm going to play it again. The passenger, it is later learned, provides officers with a false name. 
So they say the passenger, which is later learned, provided false name. What that means is we want you people to think that this, these officers knew that something was wrong because he gave him a false name. When in fact, when establishing the probable cause, the courts will not review that has any type of suspicion or any type of articulation or articulable fact on the probable cause because they didn't find out till later that he gave a false name. You can only act on information you know. You can't justify what you did because of information you found later. You're also going to see that later they found a BB gun in the back seat. Later they found methamphetamine in the car. Later they found this. That's all fine and dandy. I mean, I, I agree that that's probably why he was doing what he's doing. But you can't justify what the officers did because of what you found later. And in this press release, I think that's kind of what they're trying to imply or to get you pesky citizens who don't know any better to believe. See your license and insurance, uh, I don't have a license copy, but I do have a license. Okay, you still have it with you. Anytime somebody says they don't have a license, it normally means they're suspended. Well, Rick, I forgot my license. I said normally you get a vehicle, a couple guys acting suspicious late at night. Uh, now all of a sudden nobody has ID. Everybody forgot their wallet. Everybody forgot their ID. Now... Normally, that's a big clue that they're going to lie to you and give you false information. Now, I can articulate that in my probable cause saying I've worked the streets for, you know, over 20 years. And out of uh, out of the thousands of people that have said they forgot their driver's license, you know, 990 of them gave me false information. And later, we found their license in the car. They just didn't want me to know who they really were. So when people say I don't have a license or I don't have it on me, it is normally very suspicious, again, coupled with the area, high crime area, night, furtive movement, suspicious behavior, uh, reaching around a car, not complying, looking straight ahead. All these things are articulable for why you, you feel something is not right. So this guy keeping his hands on a wheel like this, I know somebody's going to be, Rick, I thought we were supposed to do that. Look, if you're not a criminal, I can tell you're not a criminal pretty quick. But criminals who keep their hands in sight and they're nervous and they're not. Look, all that tells me is that you know the game and you know the rules and this ain't your first rodeo. So it doesn't make me feel at ease like a lot of people may think it does. It doesn't. I just, I'm actually wondering why are you being so cooperative and why are you keeping your hands and why are you not having your license suddenly? I mean, it's like nobody goes out of the house without their ID or wallet. I mean, it's very rare that you forget your wallet. I mean, I've done it a couple times, but I keep it in my phone now, so I always have my phone. But, I mean, it's just totality. It's not individual. But wasn't what 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 isn't part of the probable cause is information we find out later that the passenger is a sex offender, that he didn't register, that he had drugs in the car, that he had a gun, that he was on probation. Uh, all that we find out later does not matter on what we did when we acted. Okay, where are you headed from? I'm coming from my house. Uh, where are you going? Uh, to one of my buddy's house. You got an ID on you, man? Uh, I don't. Yeah, got... Shocking. Driver forgot his wallet, so did the passenger. Damn, what are the odds? Okay, just think about it. One person may forget their ID, but for both people, sometimes I got four people in the car. Everybody forgot their wallet. Really? Rick, that's not suspicious. You're just being, you're, you don't like them because they, shut up, you freaking idiots. What's your name? Sorry, it was Sean. John. Wow, that's a common name, but for some reason it's really common when people don't have their driver's license. Rick, you can't say that. That's jumping to conclusions that you're stereotyped. Shut up, you freaking idiots. Can you spell that for me? Okay, what's your birthday? Anytime you ask somebody a birthday when they don't have ID, they usually make it up. A good follow-up question is always to say, and how old are you? And they'll pause. They'll be like, shit, what year did I give them? I was born in this year. And you'll see that calculation time to give you the right date of how old they are to match the fake date they gave you. 
because they're not smart enough to just change like the month. They'll change the year, the day, the month. They'll just make some shit up. Usually if you ask them again, hey man, you walk up in the car like five minutes later, shit man, I can't read my your date of birth you gave me. What was that? And they'll give you a different date of birth. So there's different ways to trick the smart crooks. Alright, you got insurance? Oh, is this your car? I'm not sure if it's got insurance. Oh, this is your car. So again, the passenger owns the car, doesn't have any ID, but the driver who's driving doesn't have any ID. Why isn't the owner of the car driving? Rick, maybe he was tired and, and the guy was just shut. You're a freaking idiot. Can you pull it up in your phone? Okay, do that and I'll be right back. Officer Linkowski goes back to the patrol car to run both names through. Oh, listen to the public service officer. Oh, everybody call Casper PD and tell him how nice their public service officer is. Through the police database. Officer Bigelow remains with the suspect vehicle, speaking casually with the occupant. Oh, he's speaking casually. Her her definition, she's trying to explain this like she's justifying what he did, but because she doesn't really, I, it's just so BS for somebody that knows. Maybe somebody else would be like, I thought she did a good job. From a cop, she sounds like a freaking idiot. He spoke casually. He tried to request him to stop. He requested several times. He was screaming and yelling, stop the fucking car, I'll shoot you. But, you know, you, you listen to her and it's like, oh, it's a nice woman calming voice going, the officer asked several times for him to stop. See, they're playing. That's like those freaking medical commercials. They go, take this drug. It's really good. It'll help you. It'll save your life. May cause side effects if you shit your pants all day, you throw up, you have headaches, and you'll die of a brain tumor later. But this is a really good medicine for you. It's always that little after shit that comes in that you're like, what the hell did they just say? This woman's doing that right now. Calm voice, explaining things like we want you to see it. Officer Bigelow grows increasingly suspicious. Oh, he grew increasingly suspicious. Wow. Of the activity happening within the vehicle, and at this time asks the passenger to exit the vehicle. So see, why was he growing suspicious? She says that like it, like she knows it's a fact, but she doesn't articulate why. The passenger rolls up the window and has a brief conversation with the driver before the driver exits and says, I am not part of this. Okay, when one party of a car, you have multiple people in a car, and this happens quite frequently for people that don't work the road or in high crime areas, it's very common when you stop cars with multiple people that one or more parties will jump out of the car, put their hands up, and say, I, I don't want to be involved. I, it ain't me. I ain't got nothing. I, I don't want to be involved in this. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't want, you know, and they'll start freaking just, when the person does that, one of two things are happening. Either they got shit and they're trying to get out of the car so they can run, or they know the guy inside is crazy and got dope and guns and they don't want to get caught in a car when the shit goes down because they know the guy's crazy. So one of those two things. So regardless, when a person jumps out of a car and raises their hands in the middle of a stop and says, I'm not involved in this or I don't want to be a part of this, we call that a clue. It is later learned the passenger is telling the driver to flee. At Very common. The crook wants the, the driver, which is why he wasn't driving. I want you to flee. I want you to run. I'll throw the dope out. Then when they stop me, I'll say, hey, man, I didn't run. I didn't do anything. I didn't throw the dope. Prove it. So... Again, the driver and owner of the car is smart to get this dumbass to drive their car. But the dumbass had enough sense to go, I ain't running from these cops. You got a, you got dope and guns in here. I ain't going to prison for the rest of my life for this shit. And you might add, the driver doesn't get charged because he's kind of a friendly DA witness. He should be charged with possession of the car. I don't know if they printed the dope or printed the gun. He's in the car. He's driving. He's transporting a dope and gun around and the other guy. And yet he doesn't get charged because the DA, he gave a good statement that he wanted to be part of it, etc. So if you're a friendly witness to the government, sometimes you don't get charged. Kind of like Hillary Clinton. She's kind of a friend to a lot of people in government, so she doesn't get charged. At this time, the passenger begins moving into the driver's seat in an attempt to flee the scene. Officer Bigelow gives multiple commands to exit the vehicle and not to flee. As the passenger begins to move into the driver's seat, the officer opens the car door and grabs the pass. I want you to listen to the way she's explaining this. 
if we didn't have video and you just heard her explanation, you would think this was a very controlled, he opened the door and asked the passenger not to. This is not anything like she's trying to make you believe, which is why she loses credibility and the agency loses credibility because you put this bullshit freaking press conference together and you expect idiots to believe or be stupid enough because she's got a calm, soothing voice and she's feeling full of bullshit lies and explaining something that ain't, ain't what the video shows. Passenger in an attempt to prevent his transition into the driving position. However, the force of the passenger's movements unintentionally pulls the officer into the vehicle. I don't believe that at all. The officer jumped in to grab him. That guy did not pull him, and you will see it in the video. That guy did not pull him into the car. He grabbed him and was fighting and then let go, and the guy kept going. So they both were going in the car. Not that that matters. I don't have a problem with the guy jumping in the car, reaching for the keys, or trying to shove it in park. But he gets caught in a car when a guy drives away, so he's kind of screwed. Pickle. Okay, here's a clue. Now, what does this do? This immediately distracts him and pulls his attention away from the guy inside the car. So the guy in the car now can be doing multitude of things. He can be eating dope. He can be repositioning the gun for quick grabbing. He could put the gun in his hand. He could be moving over to drive away. Could be setting himself or the car on fire. I mean, there's just all kind of things that happen in this little short what I call distraction by one or more parties in a car. So this guy is like, I know shit's about to go down. I don't want to be a part of it, but it still distracts this officer's attention to focus on him. Hey. Luckily, his FTO comes out, or the, the, the guy that's on FTO says, hey, what the hell's going on? And sees that it's going to shit, and he drops what he's doing and gets back out there and gets engaged. Good for him. Come back here. What are you doing, man? I'm just getting out of the car, dude. I ain't trying to do nothing. I'm getting out. Just stay here. Just stay here in the ground. All right. Sit here in the ground. Okay. So the guy on FTO is watching his partner. And and I was, I don't know what you all are watching. I was watching him. So now I want to, I want you to watch the officer now. So. Come back here. What are you doing, man? I'm just getting out of the car. So you see the officer open the door? Does it look like he got pulled in? But Rick, the, the nice little blonde lady said he got pulled in. Well, I'm telling you, he didn't get pulled in. He jumped in. Okay? I ain't Come back here. What are you doing, man? I'm just getting out of the car, dude. I ain't trying So he jumped in the car. Do I have a problem with that? No. I've got a problem with the PD trying to explain this like the guy's sliding action and inertia pulled him in trying to make it into a physics equation that somehow the officer didn't jump in the car. What I'm thinking is there's probably a policy that officers can't jump in cars. So now they have to word this somehow because somebody died that the officer was pulled into the car and didn't jump in a car. I I'm guessing that's what happens. That's the problem when agencies start trying to fool and double talk and start playing like media and government to where they have to lie about everything. Just call it what it is. The officer saw the guy jumping over there and he wanted to stop him. And he reached, lunged, jumped in a car in an attempt to stop him from driving off and endangering the public. Why can't we just say that? For some reason, we've got a cute, soft, little voice blonde telling us all these kind words on how the mean driver pulled the officer in. That's bullshit. Just stay here. Just stay here in the ground. All right. Sit here in the ground. So once I saw my officer get pulled in, I, first of all, I think I, I would have been a little bit more aggressive. Sorry. You can call me a jackboot. As, as soon as I saw my partner go in that car, this dude would have been on the ground. I'd have proned him out, threw him on the ground, and said, don't freaking get up and don't move. And then I'd haul ass to the car. So this guy, he's young. He's not, he's not off FTO yet. He probably don't want to rough somebody up and all this other stuff. But I don't care. If, I, if I've got somebody and shit goes down with my partner and I know they're in a car and I can't see him, I'm abandoning this dude, but I'm going to abandon him on the ground, hopefully to slow him down so he can't reach for a gun or get me in the back because I'm going to go over here. But this officer did a good job. He sat him on the ground nicely. He was very politically correct, and he said, stay here. So here it's kind of, this is, this is what you call, oh shit moment. It's like, damn, my FTO just got freaking kidnapped. I'm out here on FTO, and my, my FTO just got kidnapped right in front of me. What the hell? <laughs> that shit ain't going to go over good on your, uh, your evaluation, dude. FTO. Uh. This was a good shift. The trainee uh, allowed me to be kidnapped while 
<laughs> so this guy kind of panics, but he does jump in a car. He says, screw this guy, and immediately goes after this guy. Some people will be saying he shouldn't have turned his back on this guy. He should have cuffed this guy. I'm okay with what this guy's doing. He's trying to get to his partner. Maybe technically or, or tactical-wise, he should have prone this guy out and handcuffed him. Usually if I left somebody on the side of the road, I would leave him handcuffed. If they want to run off with my handcuffs, that's okay. I'll charge them with theft later. But I usually handcuff them. I've handcuffed people to trees, to light poles, to stop signs because I was in a hurry and there was pursuit or something was going on and I had to bail and I didn't want him running off. So I just put your arm around his pole. Man, you can't leave me. Shut up. Give me your damn arm. Hook him up to a pole and I'm gone. So this guy obviously runs away after. All right, wait. Let me ask you. Let me do a pop quiz here. I got a pretty educated audience. Let me see if I got any liberals here. Raise your hand if you think Billy Bob stays here after the cop drives off and chases his partner. Who thinks he stays here? Raise your hand. Well, that's because you're a freaking idiot. Of course he doesn't stay there. He runs off. They catch him later. But he already gave his name and date of birth if he gave the real name so they know who he is. And that's probably how they found him. Or he was jumping fences and the neighbor called in. Hey, my dogs are barking and some guy just jumped over my fence. And like, oh, that must be the guy that ran off from where the FTO let his FTO get kidnapped. All right. Hey. This guy was going to chase him a foot thinking it might have just went short and the FTO was going to be able to stop him. But man, this guy, he floors it. <laughs> this dude's right now. He's like, hell yeah. As soon as this dude drives off, I'll just sit here and wait till he come back and get me. That's what he's thinking. Freaking idiots. 348 expedite. Okay, so I'm not sure what expedite means. I don't know if that means give me the air, uh, upgrade my cover, change my cover to code three. I don't know if they had cover coming. Uh, expedite must mean some word because that's just what he said. I mean, I, I think, you know, he probably should have put out, you know, give me some more units. I need a perimeter air unit. I need a lot of people. My freaking FDO was just kidnapped. He's in the car. Uh, they're headed, you know, and he does do that in a second here, but I just don't know what this expedite means. 348, 329 has been pulled in the vehicle and he's heading southbound on Elma. They're now eastbound. <laughs> the dispatch is like, He's in a suspect vehicle? Kind of thing. <laughs> How did he get in there? Why did you let your FTO get kidnapped? <laughs> this guy's going to get so much shit. I, he'd be getting a kidnap award or, or he'd be getting an assist on a stat with a little trophy saying the first cop ever to assist in getting his FTO kidnapped. I mean, he would just be getting so much shit after this. 10-4, they're fleeing and he's in the vehicle. They're fleeing and he's in a vehicle. Okay? So everybody's kind of like, what the hell's going on? So now she's saying emergency traffic on two. I don't know if that means we have emergency traffic or she's telling everyone with non-emergency traffic to go to two. I'm not sure what their lingo is. They're in the median now at 25. Notice the arrow. Emergency traffic on two. Call that a clue. The wrong way sign. And the arrow in the road coming at they're you. They're in the median now. Meaning they're going the wrong way now into traffic. Raises the danger. I don't know if the guy in the car knows this. But this officer surely knows it. 25. So obviously, I think he's already shot here because the car is going like this. I didn't see flashes. So everybody watch this car right here and see if we see flashes. So I'm thinking he already shot. So if you notice in a press conference, it was very dangerous. The DA said they were going the wrong way, end the highway, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what, what point he shot. So they get a interview from this guy right here, this trucker, and he says he had to avoid from hitting these guys. And the DA uses that in the statement you're going to hear at the end to kind of justify why this shooting was justified because, because a truck had to avoid them and almost hit them, surely the officer was in danger, so therefore shooting was good. Look, this DA softballed this and kind of justified the shit that this was a good shooting. I don't know why. I mean, just call it what it is. You see the truck really have to avoid this accident? I mean, it was really scary. And 
could have killed everybody. Listen to the DA's report after this on, on how this trucker almost killed him. Okay, for some reason they go to this guy's camera here. How's it going, guys? Hey, he's coming up on that side. He'll talk to you. Okay, so we got a lot of tattoos here. Rick, you're tattooed. I'm telling you, tattoos and criminal activity have a long history together. I'm sorry if you have tattoos and you think it's unfair, but for the life of tattoos and crime, they've always been closely connected. And if you notice now, most cops have a lot of tattoos. That should be a clue. So the pastor looks like a pretty big dude. When they show his picture, his booking photo, he looks thin. This pastor looks like a pretty big dude. The fact that he's leaning back like he's laying down, not good. Wow, he's got a lot of tattoos. Both hands. He's got tattoos on this arm and he's got on his knuckles. And Rick, maybe he just likes tattoos and you're a tattooist. All right, whatever. I want you to watch this guy breathing. Look at his belly going up and down. He's breathing hard. Why? Call that a clue. So he's checking around a car, obviously looking for weapons, for drugs, anything that they might have hidden. They've already hidden it because, you know, they're they're on a traffic stop. That's probably the furtive movement they saw. They were hiding their shit when they saw the cops. Now remember, we already know nobody has ID now. Guy gets on his phone, I think he said pull it up on your phone when he asked for insurance. So he acts like he's acting for insurance. Again, feigning cooperation, getting officers to drop their guard like they're good people, only to set the officers up before they put their plan of attack, flight, fight, whatever, into action. We're uh, getting ready for bed. Still awake or getting ready for bed? What do you mean? Like, you just, just wake up and you're going to work or you've been up all night? No, we actually just got off the bike. We've been working on this bike. Oh, okay. Nice. What are you working on? It's just a little mini bike. Best. Okay, so cops engaging, the FTO, he's engaging in kind of what we call consensual conversation and he, he's gathering information, he's checking for inconsistency, seeing if they're nervous, seeing if they match, see if they fill them full of bullshit. This is all part of the investigation here. You think the cops are being nice. Rick, maybe he just cares about what they were doing. Okay. Is it? Did you get a run in or what? Who thinks this cop cares about this mini bike or if it was running? <laughs> I've, I've done this a thousand times. I don't give a shit. I'm trying to come off personal so you think I'm your friend and get you to drop your guard so I can tell if you're lying or not. That's cool. Whose vehicle is this? It's Yours. Is it registered to you or somebody else? Mine and my girlfriend. Okay. So me and my girlfriend and crooks will always put cars in two names. So when a crook gets arrested, the girlfriend can go get the car from where it's towed because it's you have to be on the registered owner in order to get a car once it's towed by the cops. Only the registered owner can get it. So when you hear me and my girlfriend own the car, that means that the girlfriend's getting aid. She's getting money uh, from the government to pay for the car, to pay for the insurance and everything, but I just have her name on it, but I use it for my drug activity. But if you tow it, I can say it's not her fault. She's a single mom, and then you'll give her the car back. So that's why that happens. See, most people don't understand all this that goes on in these criminal activity planning. 
What's her name? Bridget. Bridget, okay. Hey. I would have kept talking. Does Bridget know you have the car? Where's Bridget? Why are you not driving the car if it's your car? Why is he driving? Have you been drinking? I mean, I, I, I would have been popping off a lot more questions on these guys, but... What's your name again, man? Sean? Sorry. Can I talk to you real quick? Can you hop out for me real fast? Okay. So this cop's... Been, this, this criminal's been around. He's been in the joint. He's a registered sex offender. He's got kidnapping charges. He's been around. So he knows right now the gig's up. Once he gets me out of the car, he's either going to find something on me or he's going to search this car and find in the car and I'm going to jail. So this is, I always say the handcuffing part is the most dangerous for cops because as soon as you handcuff, they know this is my last chance to escape. Once he gets the handcuffs on me, I'm screwed. Well, this right here, getting out of this car, this guy knows I'm screwed if I get out of this car. So what does he do? Best. <laughs> we call that a clue. You ask a guy to get out of the car, he's been sitting there with the window down all night, and now he starts rolling the window. That's a clue. I'm not answering questions. I'd like That's fine. I'd just like you to hop out real quick I'd for like me. Your okay. I'm not answering questions. I'd like your sergeant. This is stalling. This is, I'm, I got to I gotta get my plan in motion now. You're distracting me. And he's telling the driver right now, just drive away, dude. Floor it. Let's get out of here. Let's drive. And this is when the driver goes, no, dude, I can't do that. And that's when he jumps out the car. Okay, I'm still asking to hop out of the car, though, Sean. Hey, so listen to me. Don't drive off. Don't drive off. So I'm thinking the officer heard the passenger tell him to drive off. And now he's talking to the driver, don't drive off. Hey, uh-uh. If he drove off, they, they're not really authorized to shoot him, but they may have shot him. You never know. What are we doing? Don't drive. Hey, what are you doing, man? Pull him back there. That's when he jumps out and distracts him. He's driving. Hey, hey, don't do it. Don't fucking do it. So this is when the nice little convoy says, the officer tried to prevent him from an inertia from him driving, dragged the poor officer into the car, whatever. I will fucking show me your hands right now. Put your fucking hands up. Don't you fucking do it. Don't you! If you drive away with me, I will fucking kill you! Hey! Hey! I'm gonna fucking shoot you! I'm gonna... Okay, so now they said the speed hits 70 miles an hour. I don't think it gets that fast. But at any speed, you're kind of screwed. You're kneeling down a car. You don't have a seatbelt on. If he crashes, you're screwed. But if you shoot him and he crashes, you're screwed. So, I mean, if you're really scared that he's gonna crash and hurt you, is shooting him the best option? I'm okay with what this cop did, by the way. Fucking shoot you! Well, I will fucking shoot you! Stop! Stop the fucking car! I'm gonna fucking shoot you right now! Last chance! I'm gonna fucking shoot you! Shoot me! I'm gonna fucking shoot you! Shoot me then! What are you doing? I'm going. So if you look at speedometer now, it looks like maybe he's going 40 or 50. Uh, but stop the fucking car! Stop reaching! Stop reaching! Okay, so I don't know at this point whether or not he had already shoved it in park and tore the transmission up, and that's when he started reaching, or if he still hasn't done that. that that's a little unclear from the video from what I can see. Stop reaching! 329 shots fired! 329 shots fired! So he's screaming shots fired, but he doesn't know his radio's been turned off in a fight. His radio's off. Show me your head! Show me your head! So they're still rolling. You can tell out here things are going by slow. This is when they were drifting. 329, we're F Street. North Bri or Beverly Street, Brian Stock Trail. Again, I got shots fired. One mile's down, start EMS. He wouldn't fucking stop, he kept reaching. Yeah. Where's the other passenger at? No, I appreciate you doing that. The FTO's kinda haunted though, man. He's like, where's the passenger? Where's that motherfucker that jumped on the car? <laughs>
<laughs> FDO, the guy on FDO is like, oh man, I just left him there. Okay, that's cool. I appreciate it. You came and got me. <laughs> We're going to be on I-25. The Kinley exit northbound. Well, the officer has tattoos. Rick, you said tattoos are bad and criminal. Well, I'm just saying, the officer has tattoos. Same little tiger stripes. Let's get him out of the car. Start. Let's. I don't know where it went. From here, man. Let's get him out. I... Just start with the EMS on him. FTO's out of breath. Obviously, he's in fight or flight. He just killed somebody. His whole life's going in legally. Is it justified? Is this guy going to die? Uh, you know, so all this shit's going on and why you hear him breathing so much. Even though he was fighting and screaming, it's his fight or flight that got him in that. Dude, he started reaching. I'm, just, I'm not going to say anything right now. FTO caught himself. I don't want to say too much. I know I'm on camera. I don't want to give a statement. Hey, all right, are you good, man? I'm good. I'm not hit. Okay. I thought, I thought for sure he's pulled a gun on me. But he, he, I got into the car. He took off with me in the car. Yeah. Do we need to try to go to custody of that guy? Okay. Yeah. So just just hang out by your car, man. Okay. There was one male in the traffic stop. We. What? That guy was Tyler What? Okay. It was. So it sounds like I might not be okay. I'm okay with this. what this guy did. I don't, I don't really have any problem. I got more problem with the PD trying to fluff it up and the DA making all this bullshit justification. Probably got the jitters. He can't sit still. That's why he's moving up and down, still breathing hard. Fuck, man. I begged him to fucking stop the car. He wouldn't stop. I was in it. I finally was like, he's going. This is very common when you're in these crises. You start trying to justify. A lot of people are going to say the cop's trying to justify. his cop's explaining, etc. You, you just want to tell your side of the story because you're jacked up and it happens so quick and you're kind of grabbing. So, I mean, I'm okay with this. Unfortunately, anything he says is called a spontaneous statement. And it can be used in court against him. So he can't claim that, you know, I said that, but I really didn't mean that. Well, you said it. It was spontaneous. Therefore, we believe it. So. With me. He kept fucking reaching. He kept digging. I, like, he wouldn't let me put it in park. I was telling him, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. He came around the corner like 40 miles an hour. I finally got it slammed into park, and the car started skidding. And then he lunged into the back. He started reaching. He grabbed something. I don't know what it was he grabbed. I couldn't see his hand. He reached over to the other side. I told him I'm going to shoot you. And finally, yeah. I just... Okay, so you're going to see in a minute where he did reach for... He had a lighter that does look like a pistol grip and could be confused as a pistol in the heat of battle. But um, again, I'm okay that he was trying to drive off and kill this dude that he shot him. I did it. I, I think I shot him like three or four times. I, like, I could feel the car in park. And we were coming to a halt, but we started to skid... But I didn't know what he grabbed. Like, I, dude, I, I was positive he was getting ready to shoot me. Yeah. Plus, he. I mean, because the other guy popped out, and then you started yelling at him. So I came up to try to deal with him, but then you. <laughs> this guy's like, dude, man, just don't give me a bad rating for letting you get kidnapped. <laughs> you started getting the worst fights. So I just had him. I mean, down. I shouldn't have reached in to try and keep him put him in park, but I reached in and tried to get it in, and like. So see, there probably is a policy that you don't reach in, and he, and FTO saying I probably shouldn't have done that. Well, sure, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, but. If you'd have reached in and grabbed the keys and he didn't get away and you'd have found the dope and nobody got killed, it would be a good thing that you reached in. Remember, the outcome of an incident always decides how other people are going to get to explain it. I, he got it in park and I was already in it started to move and we were, we were moving before I could even, we were fucking driving before I could like even get out. God yeah. damn it. Yeah, I, mean, I had to make the decision to leave that guy there. No, I appreciate you. I, well, and here's the problem is my radio got shut off, so I'm in the car trying to get on it. It won't, so I finally got it on. So I was calling. I fucking started calling it out right away, though. No, you were on. I appreciate I don't know what you were able to say, but, like, he just took off with Bigelow yeah, in the car. I took, yeah, that's what I said. I took him off. I took off. Or he took off with you in the car. These I was trying to get it on. Like, I think I got on. I was like, I'm in the car. He's not, I don't know. 
Okay, here's a tip to you big red truck people. If you pull up on a scene with a bunch of cops, we know you're here. We, you don't need your siren on. You can turn it off before you get to us and blow our freaking eardrums out. I know it's cool that you like to play with your little red lights because you're stuck in a firehouse all day. But when you pull up on a scene with a bunch of cops, we, our hearing is bad enough from freaking shooting and driving with our window down and, sh and end up shooting at the range and all the other bullshit that we do, driving around with a siren on. We don't need your dumb ass showing up playing with your fancy lights and siren, and you don't turn it off till you get right up on top of us after you blow our eardrums out. That's just a little tip for you fire, fire truck people. At the same moment, the former pastor... Oh my goodness, she sounds so credible, and man, I'm just so glad that they have her explaining things, because I was really lost. ...passenger, now driver of the vehicle, flees the scene at a high rate of speed with the officer's body hanging out of the car. I never saw the body hanging out of the car. I thought he was completely in the car, but maybe I missed something. Again, we're making this, she makes it sound like, oh my God, this poor officer, he got dragged into the car. Now he drove off and he's hanging out the car. Oh my God. According to the investigation, the officer knew at that point, because of the speed at which the suspect vehicle was being driven and the parked cars in the area, he was in danger. He was in danger. Well, it must be true if she said it, right? I mean, after all, she's a public information officer. The officer repeatedly tells the driver to stop. The driver does not comply. The officer begins telling the driver he is going to shoot him if he does not stop the vehicle. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. I'm going to shoot you if you don't stop the vehicle. Is that what y'all heard he said? Well, Rick, she's just explaining it, whatever. The driver responds, shoot me. At this point, the vehicle is driving an estimated 60 to 70 miles per hour. I don't, I don't get that 60 or 70, but maybe I'm not reading the speedometer right. It doesn't look like speedometers are 60 or 70 to me. ...per hour, and the officer is afraid to jump out of... Which is really irrelevant. At any speed, driving away with an officer in a car trying to stop, and you're fighting over control of the vehicle, and you're reaching around the car, and then you end up going the wrong way at night... I mean, it's clearly you're a danger to you, yourself, me, and the general public. But for some reason, I mean, agencies just want to try to lie and, and flower everything up so much that it's like, we can't tell when you're bullshitting or when you're not. Just say what happened. ...the vehicle at that speed. As the suspect vehicle enters the interstate area going the wrong direction, the officer is able to get the suspect vehicle gear selector into park. As a result, the transmission was severely damaged, yet the vehicle continued to move. Yet the vehicle continued to move. Gee, who would have, who could have predicted that? I was taught in school that when you put the car in park, the car stops. For some reason, this kept moving. No shit. At this point, the suspect vehicle is on the interstate going the wrong direction. A semi-truck driver that was interviewed as part of the investigation said he had to take evasive actions to avoid hitting the vehicle. <laughs> Can you believe that? That semi truck wasn't anywhere near these guys. I mean, maybe he changed freaking lanes, but they make it a big deal and so does the DA in his report. The officer repeatedly tells the driver to stop reaching. Later the investigation. Later in the investigation. Notice how they slide this in. Later they find this gun. Well, so what? He was reaching. He shouldn't have been reaching. He was driving. He was in danger of the officer. But, I mean, look, granted, this kind of paints a picture. Look, obviously, the guy was up to no good. That, 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 that'll go a long way, but they said this is a BB gun. It actually looks like it's got casings in it. The reveals that a lifelike BB gun was located in the back. I've never seen a BB gun that actually had little freaking cartridges. Maybe I'm old school. I'm behind the driver's seat. I'll when crooks carry these BB guns like this, People think they do it to kind of like intimidate the cops. That's not why they do it. They carry guns to intimidate the public and to make other people think they're armed and to be a bully and to threaten people. No idiot wants to pull a BB gun on a real gun with a cop. That's not why they get the gun. They get the gun. But Rick, that's why we have gun control. No, that's why the liberals tell you we got gun control. They can make a fake gun or have a fake gun. It ain't going to stop anything. Gun control is about getting good guns from good people. Ain't got shit to do with crime or criminals because they already break the law and they don't care about laws any damn way. Somehow the liberals think we make more laws. Somehow the criminals will be like, oh, you made a new law? Well, shit, I'm just going to stop my crime. 
I didn't know you made a new law. At one point, the driver does produce an object that is silver in color. So those look like cartridges or is that where the BB goes? I don't know what, what this is. Drops it and attempts to pick it up. Produce an object. Oh, I just, I just caught. They showed a real 357 next to this one. <laughs> I mean, me looking at this, the first thing I would see, what kind of dumbass puts the freaking rail at the bottom? Who puts these vents at that? That's usually on top. I've never seen, uh, maybe they do make a gun with it on the bottom. I've never seen one. I've seen a lot of guns. That is silver in color, drops it, and attempts to pick it up. That object is later determined to be a large butane lighter with silver fittings. Oh, it was a large butane lighter with silver. Ooh. Look, I could be mistaken as a gun in the middle of a fight. I got no problem with that. The guy was a no person. He was fighting. He was reaching. You told him not to. He's in danger in life. Drive him like an idiot. Shoot him. I said, I'm okay with this shooting. I'm more offended with this bullshit public affairs officer trying to sweet talk everybody and about how great everything went. That is commonly held in a pistol grip. It is around this time that the officer makes the extremely difficult. I wonder why the chief let her get some airtime and uh, let her stand in front of the camera to make her feel important. I wonder why that happened. Anybody got any suggestions? All right, we'll see. We'll see what the comments say on why we think she got selected as the public affairs officer talking in front of the cameras and be important instead of being on a freaking road doing police work. Colt decision to protect his life and fires his weapon at the driver. Go! Stop reaching! Stop reaching! Stop reaching! The officer is able to guide the vehicle into a nearby fence to stop its movement. The driver is immediately removed from the vehicle and life-saving measures yeah, yeah, are initiated yeah. and continue non-stop until the ambulance arrives. Oh, they did such a great Within job. Within about six minutes, emergency medical crews arrive and transport the driver to the hospital where he is pronounced deceased. Oh. The investigation revealed two glass methamphetamine pipes and two bags of methamphetamine in the, in the suspect vehicle. Okay, he had drugs. Suspect vehicle read the Natrona County District Attorney's conclusion to this investigation. The letter reads, violation of Wyoming law. In making contact with the occupants of the vehicle, the officer... So this is a letter from the DA she's reading because they can't just put it up or make it available for you to read it. We have to have a county employee get retirement and pay to read it to you. Officers acted within the scope of their duties. Officer Bigelow continued to act within the scope of his authority to ask the suspect to exit the vehicle. The officer noticed the suspect tried to conceal his face prior to the stop. Okay, so that wasn't said until the DA said it. And the reason why that's important is commonly criminals who are wanted or have warrants or know that the police might recognize them will try and conceal their place with a hoodie. That's why hoodies are so popular with criminals. Rick, I wear a hoodie and I'm not a criminal. I didn't say everybody that wore a hoodie was a criminal. I'm saying it's very popular with criminal because it helps hide your face. Further, the suspect misidentified himself and misspelled the last name for officers. He misidentified because he misspelled his name. They found out later, so that doesn't matter. But the DA put it in his letter as if it mattered. So I'm calling bullshit on the DA too, because that doesn't matter what he found out later. It was clear once the driver exits the vehicle saying, I'm not part of this, the level of danger for the officers is elevated. I agree with that. The DA is correct. When, when parties jump out and do that, officers know shit's about to go down. The suspect makes the decision to flee the scene. It is the Now notice in this press conference, she's reading the DA's thing and notice the DA is saying, the suspect caused this. The suspect took action. The suspect chose what to do. But when the cops go out there and kill people by accident, it's never the cop chose to take action. The cop chose to pull his gun. The cop chose to shoot and kill the person. It's not that way when government does it. It's only that way when a pesky citizen does it. Suspect who disobeys multiple lawful orders to remain on scene. Once the officer attempts to put the car in park and fails, he is left with very few choices. It was the suspect who drove at high, high speeds going the wrong direction. It was the officer that got in the car with him. ...on the roadways. 
It is wholly reasonable for the officer to believe he and the motoring public were at risk for death or serious I agree. It is reasonable. Injury. That point cannot be more illustrated than by the semi-truck driver who had to take evasive action to avoid a crash. Oh my God. I can't believe they're saying that semi-truck needed to take evasive action. That's just, that's just such a bullshit lie to me, but whatever. It sounds good for the ignorant public. Once it was clear to the suspect the vehicle was disabled, he refused to give up. He was given multiple commands to stop reaching. However, the suspect desired not to get arrested or get caught with a felony amount of meth. As a result, he did not listen to those commands. Maybe he was a registered sex offender and he didn't register and he didn't want to know where he was living and didn't want to know he had a car and maybe he had a kid at his house. Maybe that was it. The officer does not have to wait to become a further victim before using deadly force. Isn't that funny? The officer doesn't have to wait to become a victim. But pesky citizens have to wait when an officer tries to make you a victim because you can't shoot the officer or you'll be charged. See how the rules kind of get swapped when government wants to protect government? Given what the officer had just gone through, it was reasonable for him to believe, believe his life was still in danger. Law enforcement is entitled, like any other citizen, to avail themselves to the right of self-defense. Unless you're defending yourself against tyrannical cops. It was the suspect who at every turn refused to stop. It was the suspect who endangered the lives of citizens and law enforcement. It is the officer who was left with no choice but to act. I mean, this day, DA does a good job at defending this cop. I'll give him that. For the foregoing reasons, the state declines this case. Signed respectfully, Daniel J. Itzen. And I agree with the DA. I think it was kind of a BS case. In Natrona County District Department. And we'll now take a few. So here's the chief who picked the community service officer. Oh, that nice of him. A few questions. Hi, this is Alan Gerst from the Casper Star Tribune. Uh, in terms of the officers that were involved, what's their status now and how long were they on leave? According to our policies on administrative uh, was placed on uh, administrative leave and is now faithfully on administrative leave uh, and restricted duty. He's been working for us in the office for quite some time, but he, he is coming back to work uh, on the streets to protect and serve this. To protect and serve the shit out of this community. Community next week. Hi, Nick Perkins with K2 News. Um, what is the status of the original driver? Has he had any consequences or, or what is, what's going on with him? The original driver was, uh, was quickly relocated. Uh, you'll see in the video that uh, we leave him behind as, as we take care of the more immediacy uh, of our officer trapped in that vehicle. Um, we quickly locate him. He voluntarily cooperates with the investigation. Voluntary cooperates mean that they, he's going to say that everything that they're saying is true and back them up so now he becomes a friendly witness to the state and now he doesn't get charged and has been helpful in our understanding of the events at this time there are no criminal charges pending against the driver hi chief oil city trevor trujillo um do we know anything about his motivation for fleeing was it just the contraband in the vehicle or does he have a record where there are warrants for his arrest so i, I wish they asked more about criminal history on suspects this chief avoids it and hides it. Thanks to video leak, they put it up. But this chief literally protects this suspect and doesn't want to say he's a sex offender and he's got priors for kidnapping, which really shocks me. I, don't, I mean, the chief was asked a question. Why not just say that? For some reason, this whole press conference seems like they're hiding something or they're trying to hide something that's offset. Trevor, that's, that's a uh, difficult question to ask. Uh, the deceased knows his motives and his intentions. We can surmise. Uh, we can apply the, the evidence and logic to it. Uh, but in the end, we're not going to know what, it, what exactly was going through his mind. Uh, it would be the belief of some that uh, he was experiencing a series of traumatic events in his life. Um, but I, I would not be in a position to confirm or dispel his motives. What about his record? Notice he avoided the record part of the question, and it had to be re-asked. 
Um, the deceased has has a, a criminal record, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that the criminal record is relevant to... This guy must be a flaming ass liberal piece of shit chief that he's sitting here trying to protect this dude's criminal history. I do not get that shit. This guy's a career criminal. He's got prior arrests. He's a piece of shit and good riddance. And this chief's like, oh, well, in the interest of protecting the poor criminal who, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, his record doesn't really matter. Of course it matters. He's got kidnapping. He just kidnapped one of your officers. That's pretty freaking regular. He, I mean, how relevant does it have to be? He kidnaps an officer and he's got a prior kidnapping. How the hell is that not relevant? To the matter at hand today. So we have original sentence, failure to register as sex offender. So he was charged with that, got suspended. Uh, what's the next one? He had a probation violation. So while he was on probation, he violated his probation. Shocking. Criminal possession with intent to distribute. He got 180 months. 180 days. He had another probation violation. He had a kidnapping. He got 60 months or 60 days for the kidnapping. And this is kind of funny. <laughs> Make sure and like the video if you want to go watch the whole thing. Want me talking at video link? <laughs> Highlights the part. Oh, Thomas TJ. He was 42 when he passed away from bullet wounds on May 6, doing what he always did, running from the cops and having drugs and being a sex offender. Wow. Isn't that nice, TJ? He did. He died doing what he always did. Love to live life on the edge. Is that what they call it? Living life on the edge? Uh, kidnapping, sex registrant, transporting drugs. Having a BB gun looks like a real gun fighting with the cops, kidnapping a cop. Is that the new term for living on the edge? Oh, he'll be at peace now. Okay, great. All right, look, I know I went long on this one. There's a lot of things that happened in this one. So uh, again, I'm okay with what the cop did. I'm not okay with how the cop, how the PD seems like they're trying to spin it, how they're trying to protect this dude, how the DA is putting facts into his decision on why this was justified, even though the facts weren't known to the officer at the point he made the decision to do deadly force. So to me, it just gives a whole air of somebody's hiding or what are, they, what are they trying to do? Why not just say what the facts are? And I still think it's clearly justified, but with all this extra bullshit, I call foul and bullshit. So I don't trust any of them, which is what government usually does. They try to treat everybody like they're stupid. And then when nobody trusts them, they're like all shocked. Why don't, why don't people trust us? All right, well then out there, y'all have a good one.